going to roll in, but I want to welcome everyone to this very special Mariano's virtual wine tasting. I'm Amanda Puck with Mariano's, and it's great to see so many familiar faces, and we're excited beyond belief to be featuring uh, the, these wines uh, by Aveline. And we have a special uh, tasting today with co-founders, actress and author Cameron Diaz and entrepreneur and business owner, Catherine Power. Um, so we're thrilled that they're here with us and we're very lucky ladies to have you. So thank you for being here and lucky to have all of you joining. Um, and for those of you that have joined us before, you know, we all like to start with a cheers. So hopefully you have some Aveline poured up. Uh, there goes Mark. They're like yeah. getting it ready. Can we see a show of hands? Who is actually drinking Aveline right now? Oh, good. Nice. <laughs> cheers. That makes it all the more fun. Yes. We love it. They've got right, well, cheers everyone. And cheers, cheers. to Cameron and Catherine. We appreciate you. Thank you. Oh my God, awesome. So we're very um, excited to get started with the program, but we know the two of you must have been to Chicago before. So we want to know, do you have a favorite memory, a favorite food memory of our of our town here? You want to go yeah. first? Um, it, it had to be one of the times that I was on a book tour and, you know, it was right uh, actually when President Obama had been elected and there was such a great sense of pride in the city and um, I walked around uh, and, and had some great meals. I actually had a great pizza. I, I would never be able to remember where it was, but I'll forever remember that meal. It was absolutely delicious and it's such a gorgeous city. Catherine, was it a deep dish pizza or was it like a regular kind of thin crust pizza? It was like a regular, okay. more on the thin crust side, yes. That's awesome. And Cameron, what about you? I spent a lot of time in Chicago. I made um, a film there 20 some odd years ago, 25 years ago now, um, uh, my best friend's wedding. And I lived there, I lived on uh, Melrose and Broadway, I think. I had an apartment, like a townhouse. Yeah. And I loved that neighborhood and I would, I, I loved my apartment. I would have barbecues off the back stoop with like, you know, on the third floor overlooking everybody's backyards. We'd have barbecues, um, Dermot and his wife, Catherine and I all the time. And we would have, I, I, I walked that city over and over again. I filmed all over the city. Um, I love, we were there for six months. And so I spent a lot of time there. I lived there and I just love Chicago. I love everything about it. I love the people. I love the architecture. I love the food. I love the energy. It's just one of my favorite places. If it didn't get so damn cold during the winter, I, I would probably make some real space for it in my life, like possibly like as a resident. But um, I think that it's just a little harsh on the cold side for me. Yeah, and it already cold. snowed. It snowed today, this morning, and it snowed yesterday and I was like seriously like could anything else go wrong with 2020 you know I don't mind no. snow but it's like the blizzard effect yeah. that I'm not into yeah. <laughs> we're ready for the cold we're that ready for the cold sounds here. so fun to yeah. us we're still around 75 it's going to be 80 this week here which sounds lovely I'm sure but not when, after like a hundred degree yeah. weeks of a hundred degrees like right. over and over again it's just too much so oh my God. well, in the red we're glad you visited us here in Chicago and we want to know so much about both of you and, and starting and starting Aveline. So how, how do you two know each other? How did you meet? We know each other through my sister-in-law, uh, Nicole Ritchie. Um, she introduced us um, when uh, I started dating my husband, my now husband. Um, I met Catherine through Nicole in social settings. And we just sort of gravitated towards one another every time we saw each other, which was often because, you know, we were all getting together and going over to Nicole's and, and then we just, holidays click, and yeah, dinners. holidays and dinners. And so we just kind of clicked and started hanging out and doing things together and outside of Nicole. Um, and then we just kind of, you know, drinking wine one day We're yeah, we, we were literally just sitting around having a conversation about how everything in our life had gotten healthier in every single category from our household, you know, cleaning products to our skincare to, you know, our groceries, personal care. And then we said, you know, should we open another bottle of wine? And it occurred to us to say, wait, 
what's in here? Is it, <laughs> is, it's just grapes, right? And wait, are those grapes organic? Because we spend so much money to make sure that we're drink, you know, eating organic groceries. And we were reminded that, you know, it's one of the only consumables that hasn't had ingredient lists or nutrition facts. And, you know, really we, we from that day on started on a personal journey to understand how wine is made, what can potentially go in it um, without disclosure, uh, you know, more about the farming practices. And, you know, then we changed the way that we were drinking. We sought out, you know, wines made from organic grapes or naturally made wines. And, you know, this was uh, two and a half years ago now. And, you know, I think people were just starting to ask questions about wine and we would go into, you know, grocery stores or our favorite restaurants and we would ask and, you know, we would either be met with an eye roll or an I don't know. And even, even in like shops, like wine shops, there wasn't really a lot of information about the wine that we were drinking, what was in the wine or how it was farmed. But we just knew we had a much better experience with clean wine. So we felt really compelled to kind of share our story with consumers who are just like us and make it really available to everyone, you know, wherever they're shopping to be able to purchase um, a cleaner wine. So that's how Aveline was born. That was really one of the things I think that, you know, was a catalyst for us because we thought we live in Los Angeles and we can't even find this wine here, the Mecca of wellness. And, you know, going across, even in New York, I would ask restaurants, is are these organic grapes in this, yeah. you know, does this, is this wine made with organic grapes? And they had no idea. Um, and so we thought that's, if we can't find it, if it's that hard for us, how then across the whole country, certainly it would be even more difficult. Um, and so that was really what drove us was to be able to put it in every single grocery store across the country so that it was not only accessible, but completely transparent about what it was. That's why our label reads the way that it does, because we wanted the labels when people were walking down the aisle, you know, out of the 500 wines, they, we wanted them to be able to identify immediately what our wine was and not blend in with the rest of the wine bottles that kind of have all the same information that nobody, our drinkers, we felt wasn't as important to them as the information we were putting on our label. And now, you know, cut to two and a half years later and you see, you know, we walk in a store and complete, you know, sections are dedicated to this or, you know, little symbols on a menu that'll tell you what, which wines are biodynamic or organic. So we, we knew that the customer's voice was only going to get louder around this topic and, you know, wanted to provide a solution. So that makes sense. And I've been working for Mariano's for the last five years. And I did notice, you know, in the last two or three years, there's such a, an increased interest in plant-based items and, you know, organic items and healthy items and how we've evolved a lot of the areas of the store to really cater to that customer who's looking for that. And I think, you know, with wines, I know Lindsay from our adult bev departments on the call too, but we're, you know, really making an effort and, and we're, that's why we're excited to offer this to our customers because it is something that they're looking for and asking for. That's you, great. You know, and, and, and it's also delicious wine. You know, we were like, we are not going to sacrifice the taste, the taste yeah. for this. Like, and we knew that varietals, you know, we love varietals. Well, I'm happy to be like, what do you want? And Saab, do you want a Pinot Grigio? But the truth is, is that most of, uh, mostly what people, unless they're like connoisseurs of wines, they know one or two varieties that they like because they know what it tastes like, right? They're so really they, looking they, for that taste They're looking profile. for the taste profile. So instead of putting the varietal, we put the taste profile so people can sit, they automatically go, do I like this? What, what does this taste like? Oh yeah, I do actually like this. Um, I do like a dry crisp finish and I do like a little stone fruit with a little spice in my red. And I love the perfect rosé, of course. <laughs> so, you know, we, we felt that that was the information that our, our consumers really more what their choices were based off of what was in the bottle and what it tasted like. And then also our, our engagement with our consumer. We, we love being engaged with our consumers. So 
I know we're going to get to the bottles in a little bit, but I will say the way that the labels are very easy to read. I actually met today with one of our, we have tastemakers that represent us and we were talking about, you know, customers shopping and sometimes they get very overwhelmed in the grocery store because they can't pick a wine. And I think, you know, what you did with the label really is impactful because people can easily look at it to your point, you know, and I, I do love, you know, the profile of the red wine and it really lists on there what it, what it's like. And it was true to the description. So I think that's going to be very helpful to people as they're perusing and getting confused. It really have to hear it. Those yeah. descriptions took us a long time. We did those together. <laughs> oh, yeah. well, I know we're going to get to the wines in a second, but I know that you both worked so hard on putting this all together over the last two years or so. So can you tell us about the process of how you, you know, started out? I know you were traveling to all the different regions and wineries and, and sort of how that all kind of evolved. Yeah, well, I know there are a lot of sort of celebrity wines and, and alcohol brands now. And, you know, Aveline is very different. This is, um, you know, a, a company that we founded and really built from soil to glass, as they say. So, you know, we had to go out and basically meet with anyone we could possibly find in this industry who would start to educate us. And Literally, we, we just, we made cold calls to people who were in wine, who were in spirits, anybody who said, oh, I know somebody, we're like, cool, can we get their number? Can you get, can we get a meeting with them? Because we just didn't even know how, we didn't know about the three-tier system. We didn't know about, you know, all the different alcohol regulations in all the different states. We knew nothing about the business. So we really had to learn, um, and it was just the two of us for about a year and a half um, and you know truly went looking for winemakers for each one of our blends that we knew had the you know uh, production capabilities to, to scale to support all of you in, in, in the retail world um, but also that we're producing growing and producing at our standards so organically grown grapes um, not adding excess sulfur you know, minimal intervention, but still having the highest quality. So we partnered with a different winemaker for each one of our blends to really nail the taste profile that we were looking for that, you know, our data suggested that the consumer was looking for. And um, we both virtually and actually were knocking on doors throughout Europe um, you know, to get these generational farmers and winemakers to take us seriously you know, to, to help us build this business. So um, it's, you know, we are uh, fortunate that we have platforms that we can, that's my cat Steve in the back, um, <laughs> that, that we can use to get the word out. But, you know, Aveline is, is, is truly a brand for the consumers, the, the men and women who are just like us, who are looking to, you know, kind of level up when it comes to, you know, their, their everyday well being. And I, speaking of Aveline, the name, can you tell us, it's such a beautiful name. I mean, it's something that's, you know, fun to pronounce and it looks really pretty on the label. How did you come up with the name? Thank you. Well, we literally, we sat for a long time looking up, we would string words together that were actually, a lot of them were cat related because we both love cats. <laughs> <laughs> so we were trying to like put friendship and cats and in different languages and community. <laughs> and we were like, like stringing all these words together that we felt represented our friendship because we really felt like this was a, a brand about like community and friendship. Um, and everything that we found was lit was already a wine or a, a vineyard because there's hundreds of thousands of vineyards and, and wines in the world. And they're all, they all have those names. They took them. Yeah. And so, <laughs> so one day we were just like, let's, we were literally just like, let's talk about baby naming websites. And we went through and we sent each other like lists of the ones that we liked. We, then we went through and like name, check the ones that we liked. Then we looked all of those up and we looked at their meaning because the meaning was really important to us. And then we came across Aveline. We loved the way it sounded. We loved the way it looked. We felt it was feminine, but yet rounded strong. and masculine and strong. And then the, the meaning was really, felt yeah, really. It, it, the meaning is sensitive, humble, and lively. Mm -hmm. And we thought that perfectly embodied the type of brand that we wanted to create. No, oh, that's great. I think sometimes when you start a business or like open a restaurant, the hardest thing to do is actually name it. And I think you yeah. 
those nailed it. You know, Catherine is really good at this. This is what she does. She's an entrepreneur and she, you know, I'm just following her, like holding on as far, you know, as, as tight as I can to this woman who's already like, she's heading in this direction and I'm just going with her. But she was like, we have to name it first. We have to name it. We have to name it. So we first, we got the name first, really. We found what the, what the brand was through the name. Um, or we knew what the brand was. We found the name that matched. And then we went from there. Just kind of and, built and, off of that. Yeah, we built off of that. And, you know, then you can trademark it. Then you can incorporate. Then you can do all those things to build the actual business itself. Um, but it came from the, you know, that real um, place of, you know, for us, community, friendship, um, and in transparency on what the brand is. Well, I think everyone's probably excited to start tasting the wine. And um, we're very excited because Mariano's is the first retailer in the city of Chicago to have the red. So <laughs> we can offer that to customers. It just launched, I think, yesterday, right? Or today? I think today. Yeah. yeah. So we're thrilled. Um, so maybe we, we'll start with this one, if that's okay. Yeah, great. that's great. Right. Do you have any rosé in white? I do, <laughs> downstairs. <laughs> I'm like, do we do more with salsa? The red. <laughs> so, yep, we have the Aveline. Um, Any questions about? Well, I love. Let's like look at the label again. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, the taste. It says light to medium body with hints of cherry and the perfect touch of spice. Mm -hmm. So when I when I read that, I'm like, oh, it kind of. I know this is a French blend, but it, cause uh, it's from, it also says where it's from. So, you know, it's from France, but it kind of has like, when I read that, I'm like, oh, it kind of might be a Pinot Noirish taste. And when you taste it, it's actually very blended and very like delicious. And it does have that very, very note to, not to make a rhyme, but a very, very note in that when you smell it and you do taste the spice when you drink it. And I think this is like for this weather in Chicago today, I don't know who's with me, but like it's raining, it was snowing. Um, this is what I want to like cuddle up to later when I'm like watching television and like relaxing. Yeah. So we made this blend because Catherine likes a lighter. She likes a Pinot. I like a cab. And so we wanted to find something obviously that we both could drink and enjoy. Um, and so we found something that we felt, and the way we did it was we tasted, we drank a lot of wine. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we did it, folks. We tasted a lot of wine and we, we found, we, we would wait pretty much when we would drink something, we'd taste it and we'd just go both like go, mm. and we'd both literally say, mm, at the same time and look at each other because we both said, mm, and then we knew that that was the wine that we, you know, pursued. How yeah. do we get this blend? How do we find the right provider for it? And so it was, it was definitely about needing that middle so that we could, you know, drink it during the summer because I still love a red wine during the summer, yes. but then have it during the winter. Well, let's winter. face it, we live in LA, it's still 80 degrees. Yeah, yeah. So we want to embrace winter. So we wanted something that wasn't too heavy that could be enjoyed year round, but also give you that fall feeling. So I think it's- Yeah, this is, it's giving me all the fall feels. I love it. It's like a great, this is great. And I love also how you write, like pairs well with candlelight and a starry night. So, I mean, yes. I think this would go really, it would stand up really well to food, but it's something that, you know, I could drink with my husband later and you guys, you know, it's a fun, like just wine just to enjoy. Yes. Um, what would you pair this with food wise? Well, we love it with pizza or, yeah. <laughs> or like a nice um, red meat. I mean, honestly, like hamburger, we've had it with burgers. Yes, we've had it with burgers. Um, it's, I uh, would eat it with anything, really. I'm not really like, for yeah. me, this goes across, you know, every spectrum of flavor for me. I would do this even with just like a, a bruschetta, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like a fresh tomatoey basil vinegary like it normally you think oh like a white rosé for me like I just get yeah. on a nice red with like a crunch and a, like a little like an thing. arugula salad mm -hmm. it's delicious yeah. with a little arugula and parmesan 
Um, I agree with all of that. I, not to be basic, but you know, I I also would just love it with just a straight up cheese board. I, we sell. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, that's we, what we we literally were just eating a yeah, cheese board, like a charcuterie <laughs> cheese board. It's not about bringing the cheese. <laughs> yeah, board we were up like, should we us. just put it in front of us and be eating it? I was like, we can't talk with our. We, yeah, though. we didn't want to go to this house. <laughs> I love it. I mean, I think it's 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 great. How's everyone liking it? Like, give us a wave or. A, yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. This is so fun that we have so many people tasting along. Okay. Should we go do the white next? Sure. All right. Moving my glasses around. So um, just again, I love like referring to the bottle because it makes it easy for everyone. And this is from Spain. Yeah. And um, it's dry with a crisp, fresh finish. And I did, you know, I obviously did research before our call today, but this is a perfect combo of both of the wines that you like kind of combined together because you both have different preferences. Once again, we, we had the hardest time agreeing on a white wine profile because we like very different things. I like a, like an acidic Pinot Grigio. You like a no, very- No, I, I like, like, like you like the more like that rounded Grigio. I like the like dry, crisp Sauvignon Blanc or Sancerre. Like right. I just like to cut right down and just like- Yeah. Broke, it's like, it's so crisp it breaks over my palate. So in Spain, because there are so many minerals in, in the ground, in the soil, they produce the most delicious grapes mm -hmm. that are so dry mm -hmm. and light and minerally. And this was one of the, I think this was the first wine that we made and we just both fell in love with it, which was so cool because we have such different, um, you know, preferences and we've given it to Chardonnay people and they love it. Um, they, you know, the, the cool thing about this wine is that they, they put it into a chestnut barrel for like a second. Oh, that's actually really cool. There's just a little bit of wood, but it's not oak. It's not too heavy. They don't leave it there too long. So it doesn't get like too, you know, insaturated. But I think that that helps break it a little bit over the palate for those who like a Chardonnay. You know, so it's a really hard thing to do to find a white that goes from, you know, that all drinkers, a crisp to a, you know, from a Sauv to, to a Pinot Grigio to a Chardonnay drinker that will, you know, all be able to pull out whatever it is yeah. that they enjoy. It's also a relatively low alcohol content for, for a white wine. So it's 11.5%. So super light, easy to drink. You know, if you're not careful, you can drink the whole bottle by yourself. So I like to make a spritzer with it just to sort of uh, pace myself. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it's, it's you know, and, and, and again, just as good as- <laughs> She's like, not me. She's like, <laughs> <laughs> Nikita's like, nope, uh, I'll just bo bottle it up, bottle bottoms up. <laughs> yeah, our Mariano <laughs> shoppers that are here tonight are like, you know, we're drinkers. So <laughs> what yeah. we also loved about the bottles, I'll just keep going on and on. Sarah and I were spending time earlier, maybe not on this one, but there was one that actually had, you know, the calorie count and it's, you know, the portion size. Mm -hmm. Oh, and the red one. So we thought that was really cool because for those of us that are health conscious and just want to know that kind of information, it's it's great that it's all there. And the wines have zero sugar, which right. we're not allowed to put on the bottle. The TTB is different than the FDA. They don't consider the, TT, the sugar, um, you know, separate from fat, if you can believe it. <laughs> so so. It, 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 or yeah, I think uh, uh, carbs. So we do carbs, list yeah. carbs. And we list it's it's basically the like the the red wine is three point nine grams of carbs per glass. Um, there's no sugar and um, you know it's uh, and, and the information is going to be on the white and rosé next year. Yes, and it's all on our website. If you go to drinkaveline.com, you can find the ingredients, anything that's added to any of the wines, which is extremely minimal. Um, as well as the sugar content, uh, which is zero for all three blends, um, the carbs and the calories. Which is, by the way, very notable because a lot of wines, and I think this is why I often would get a headache from drinking wine, is there's a lot of oftentimes concentrates are added to wines for, um, for flavoring, for sweetness, color. for color. Um, and those are the ones that I think that were the, you know, that contributed were the culprits for the hangover the next day or feeling like I can't have a second glass of wine because I already feel like a little dizzy headache. and head, headache. So 
you know, that's, that's one of the big things for us with the wine is just not having what we list on the front of the label, which are the three things that we feel are really important, you know, colors, concentrates, or sugars, because those are the three sort of things that are often, you know, in commercial wines added in these. Um, so, and even not commercial wines, like just wines across the board that, that there's a possibility, but this is also another thing for why we did this is because if we're walking down the aisle and there's a thousand wines on an aisle, there could be 700 of them or 800 of them could be exactly the same as ours, but we just can't, we don't know, we can't tell. It's not, in, there's no information to tell us, right? So for us, it's just sort of like, give us the information. And it's, it's really an invitation to other winemakers who are making wine like this, mm -hmm. kind of giving them, you know, letting them know it's okay you know, an, an invitation for them to, to, to let everybody know that, you know, this is what we do and what we don't do. Um, because I think that they'll see now that it's, it's actually very beneficial to, to their business to be able to, you know, state those facts for people. Um, Cameron and Catherine, we noticed also on the bottle, it says vegan friendly. Can you kind of talk to us about that? Yeah. So that's one of the things that we learned early on when we were on this journey that, um, a, a, a large uh, number of commercial wines are actually fined through um, animal byproducts. So by using a, a derivative of a fish bladder or casing, um, and that is not something that has to be disclosed on, um, you know, the bottle. So, you know, vegans who are drinking wine, we, we're not vegans, but we know a lot of them and they just had no idea that the wine, you know, comes in contact with animal byproducts. So that was important for us to make sure that, you know, we were using, you know, um, non-animal products to, to filter and fine our wine. And um, so we wanted to make that really clear on the label as well. Um, I know we're getting close to our time, but do we have a few minutes to talk about the rosé before we have sure. to end? So the rosé is also a wine that we offer at Mariano's. And um, this, to me, is like a very classic, like what you expect a rosé to deliver. And I, it is from France. So can you tell us a little bit about, about this wine? Oh, yes, this was a very important one um, for us. We, we sought out this, this winemaker and, um, you know. Well, we, we, I think that it was over Rosé that we started to have the conversation. That, that <laughs> so we know. And um, yeah, Rosé is very important. Yeah. <laughs> so we were like, we're, why can't we, you know, we need a, a sort of the perfect rosé, you know, and it has to come from Provence. Yeah. In our and, opinion, it's just, there's nothing better than a really French, you know, rosé. And so we just, we, as Catherine said, we pursued um, the winemaker that we really loved and she made a beautiful blend for us. Um, and we, we just, it's one of our favorites for sure. Yeah. So I think um, for those of you that have the rosé and you're tasting it, it does have that very Provence style, like with the melon and the zest, and it's just very easy, light. I mean, this is, you know, I'm definitely, I know people think of rosé as a summer wine, but I also think of it as a winter wine. I mean, there's no reason why you can't be yeah, absolutely. I think that has definitely shifted now. And I mean, we're, we're fulfilling so many orders right now, just starting fall, you know, of, of rosé. It does not seem to be just a, a summer juice. <laughs> and we have, you know, I, I always love during the fall, like a Thanksgiving dinner. I love a rosé at the beginning of the dinner, you know, I, like a just sort of, it's a great idea. You know, I, I do like a, my, my sort of um, appetizer um, glass of wine is a rosé and then I'll go into a red with dinner usually. I was actually thinking today, it's always such a challenge for Thanksgiving, you know, everyone like picking a wine, like what's going to go with everything. And I do think that all of these actually would pair very well with a Thanksgiving dinner. I mean, the white is a little bit hearty and then the red, I think is light enough, like for like a turkey and the sides. And I love the idea of starting with a rosé to kind of kick it off. So, you know, it would be really would delicious be for a, the white wine for Thanksgiving would be like a pear and goat cheese salad, yes. with like some pomegranates maybe a little arugula would be so delicious 
some maybe a little crunched uh crushed walnuts yeah, walnuts. you know just with that with the white wine would be so delicious and I like my white wine and rosé over ice I know it sounds like crazy but the do French you- do it no. <laughs> the people in LA do it <laughs> I like a little like watered down icy cold 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 <laughs> the same. I like it the same way. Sarah, we'll remember that recommendation for Thanksgiving. We'll we'll do some fun Thanksgiving posts with the wine, but that pear and gorgonzola salad sounds great. Mm, yes. So what's next for for the brand? Like are you going to be doing more wines or, you know, any new varietals? Kind yeah, of- so I mean, we just launched red today. So that was really, really exciting. And, you know, we're, we're making sure to get it into all of the important stores like yours. <laughs> and, um, you know, we are definitely very staying very close to our community to understand what they want from us next. Um, you know, we're extre- extre- extremely driven by their, you know, preferences and also have a few ideas up our sleeves. So yeah, you can, you can uh, expect um, some, some other really cool products to come out from us. Awesome. Well, I know Sarah, myself and Lindsay are going to look forward to, you know, featuring your wines and, and looking forward to the new ones. And we love working with your team. And it's been a pleasure to see all of our customers here on our zoom tonight. Um, this really was a fun treat and it's fun to see everyone sipping along. Um, I and think by the way, I just want to give a shout out to our team. We have the best team. We love Liz is amazing. Jessica, Kate Abbott, Steven, um, Steven everybody. It's just so incredible. We really appreciate how much they've brought our, um, you know, idea for this and, and, and our, what we've built to, to the market um, and been able to help see our vision through on this. So we appreciate that, guys. That's awesome. And they're fun to work with. We had a really good time putting this together. So hopefully we'll maybe do another one in the future when you have something new. And we're just really grateful to all of you for being here. Um, So before we let you go, we'll just do one more cheers for it with everyone on Zoom. Um, And cheers to Alvin. Cheers. Cheers. We appreciate you all. Thank you so much for trying our wine. We hope that it's something that becomes a staple in your home. We, we plan on, you know, selling this wine forever. <laughs> so enjoy. Happy holidays and be safe out there, everyone. You both too. Thank you very much. Everyone, thank you. Thanks. <laughs>